Once again, my name is Denis. I am working at SUSE at storage team, and today I will be talking about the uh, Ceph on Kubic, how to set up that on Kubic, how to run that, and how to you can possibly test that as well and develop it. So, uh, as I said, uh, I am working in storage. We are developing the storage product based on Ceph. And that uh, includes not only SEV, but a lot of different configuration management software around, gateways, and all the possible tools are there. I will briefly go through the SEV technology, what is the SEV, what is the Rook, and then we'll show you how you can set up that on your environment and start running it. So uh, storage is uh, distributed uh, storage system, sorry, and uh, it's highly distributed, highly available. It's uh, distributed data across the different nodes and, uh, and provides you access to it as block devices, file system, and as uh, S3 Swift interfaces as well. It, uh, the, the, what is good in Ceph is that it uh, replicates data across the cluster, manage it, and uh, self-healing itself if some nodes are down or some disk are broken, so it will figure out where the data is, it will replicate it again and provide you data always there. So here is the, uh, one of the heart of the self system is the RADOS, Reliable Autonomic Distributed Object Store, which all these interfaces are based on. So this is a general system, a storage system, where all other are based on it. So you can use it directly with Librados interface, with Librados library, as well as it's, uh, you have services like Rados Gateway providing you S3 and Swift interface. You, ha you have block devices that you can use, mount and use, as well as file system uh, for the CephFS. So CephFS, this is native file system for Ceph that uh, actually uh, works and provides you file system really uh, rapidly, and uh, there are also other gateways that you can use, like NFS gateway, iSCSI gateway, that you also can uh, apply here and use with uh, Ceph system. Uh, the, in the heart of the Ceph system, there is the crash algorithm that actually uh, allows you to distribute the data, to know where data is, how to replicate it, and and so on. So basically, what you need to know uh, about the Ceph for this topic is this complex system in the different nodes and it's really not trivial to configure and maintain and manage, upgrade, update, and etc. That's Those are challenges of Ceph uh, in the configuration management perspective. What is the Rook? Uh, Rook is the cloud native storage orchestrator. And it's also have all these fancy words like self-managing, self-scaling, self-healing, but it's on another level. So if Ceph is the solution for data, Rook is solution for the orchestration of these services uh, around the cluster. So it automates the deployment, bootstrapping, configuration, upgrade, update, everything. So. This is the Rook. It supports not only Ceph a storage system, but other storage system as well. Uh, for example, databases, etc. There are a couple of them, but I think the Ceph is only one that is the uh, reached the version 1.0. Other systems are still in the beta stage, some in the alpha stage. So what Rook actually does, it uh, set up uh, the Ceph across your nodes, across your disks, it knows where it should set up the uh, storage nodes, it knows where to set up the monitors, managers, gateways, and etc. It does it all for you in the Kubernetes cluster, for example. So here you can see the Rook architecture. It provides, it's not only set up the Ceph, it's also provide the access to Ceph through the volume claims or directly. So you can use in your containers this uh, uh, this storage from Ceph in your containers. So there is briefly architecture of Ceph, of uh, Rook, sorry, and uh, there is what I already said, is that this Rook agent, for example, provides the access to the Ceph storage, so you can reuse it in your containers. 
Actually, I'm not expert in Rook per se. We have people here, and uh, I can point to Stefan Haas uh, sitting here in the room. And if you will have any questions regarding Rook, how it works, you can ask him. So we have Ceph, we have orchestrators that works in Kubernetes. What we miss is that's actually how to use it in OpenSUSE. Uh, in uh, storage team, as well as in other teams in SUSE, we always have the OpenSUSE first approach. So we first uh, commit our packages and our solutions to OpenSUSE and then uh, test it there, build it there, and after that we use it in the enterprise product. So we have the uh, <clears throat> we have the packages long time built in our file system self uh, development repo. Those are get submitted to Tumbleweed, and uh, the pack stable packages of self are got submitted to Leap as well. So you can see here that we have the OpenSUSE self wiki page, which you can. Uh, check and there are some uh, hints how to configure, how to use Ceph, as well as you can check those uh, build server projects, uh, what kind of packages are there and uh, how that looks like. I will show you in a, mem in a moment. So uh, this is uh, our wiki page that you can uh, read and uh, figure out what kind of methods to install in Ceph. It starts even from beginning of uh, deployment with self deploy, with how you can deploy it with salt, how you can deploy it in containers, how you can deploy it with Rook as well. So it's quite, quite useful for the beginning. Uh, here is our uh, build server project, and it contain, contains all the packages I needed uh, for you to start with self, build it, and run it. By the way, they still, this is all development project, so the released packages already are in the uh, leap and tumble with distro. You also could pay attention to sub projects. There are quite a few of them starting from Hammer release, Jewel Luminous. Currently, the stable one is Nautilus, and the development one is Octopus. So the process uh, for the release of the Ceph uh, looks following. So we have this file system, Ceph Octopus, which is a development project. We submit those packages to the file system Ceph, and from there we submit them to factory. And uh, from file system Ceph Nautilus, we submit the packages to Leap. For containers, actually, this is uh, a new thing for us. It's quite rapidly changing. Uh, lately, as Fabian said, it uh, became more stable. So we are starting to build uh, the containers as well. We have the Rook Ceph image, which is the, uh, based on Rook package. And this is a Rook operator uh, that I described, it, as well as Ceph image, which is the Ceph with all needed services that are listed here, like Ceph monitors. Ceph itself, <laughs> Ceph uh, libraries, as well as Ceph OSD. And we are planning to follow the same process. So uh, that's Fabian defined it on the wiki page. Uh, we plan to submit our containers from file system Ceph to the OpenSUSE factory and lib. So you will see those containers in the distro sometimes in the near future, but I hope. And uh, we have everything right now. We have system, we have Ceph, Rook, we have uh, built packages as well as containers. What we need is in our development setup is to actually set, set it up, use it, develop, test it, how we can do that. In OpenSUSE, <clears throat> we have, uh, in OpenSUSE Ceph, we have a long, long time project that named uh, Vagrant Ceph. It was uh, developed a long time ago to set up the virtual environment on your local computer that enables you to develop configuration management systems, for example. Uh, we have DeepC based on SALT, and that was really useful to have like multi-node set up on your local machine to set up the Ceph on different nodes. And that's, uh, that project actually provides you this ability. It's also provides a lot of, it's, it has a lot of libraries to 
prepare these images, to attach the disks uh, to the uh, OSD nodes, to define the different roles like administration role, monitor role, etc. It's also pre-upload some of the files if needed. This all defined it in the, as I said, in the wiki page, so you can read this doc documentation there as well. Uh, how it works, you need to have a box and uh, luckily enough, OpenSUSE factory has this box for MicroOS. They build in the uh, Vigrant box. So what you need is to add the box with one command and uh, make Vigrant up. And that will bring up the cluster. In this case, it's three node tiny cluster. And you will have the Kubernetes deployed there. So, uh, so this is the starting point, the Kubernetes cluster on some nodes. So you can, st you can start to deploy a rook on it. Uh, how that's possible? So the the Vagrant Ceph, as I said, this number of libraries, right? And it's also have this config YAML file where all the configuration defined, or you can define your own configuration, uh, and also it defines what to do after after the virtual machines brought up. So you can add some repositories there, you can add some packages, you can add some files, upload some files, and run some commands if you need. For example, here is the example for Tumbleweed, but uh, I will uh, talk about how to set up the uh, Kubernetes on that cluster. So, so setting up Kubernetes is quite tricky. If you go the right way with all TLS certificates, etc., I reviewed with a couple of the Vigrant uh, setups for Kubernetes, and it was really complicated. So what, what did I want is to use the same Vigrant self because it provides already infrastructure for you, and uh, set up the uh, Kubernetes. I did it really hacky. It's actually quite a lot of hacks here, so the first line here is the by admin in it, and it's used the predefined token. It runs on admin node, as you see, and it runs other commands to have the fully functional Kube admin node, uh, Kubernetes uh, master node, and also pre-uploads the rook package there, not rook package, but rook sources uh, to the admin node. And the hack here, another hack here is that uh, how the other nodes are joining the uh, cluster, I run that in the demonized way. This Kube admin join takes some time. It's actually half time out, but it's enough for Kube admin nodes to join the cluster. So it just runs on all the nodes except the admin. I do not recommend to use that in any production environment or anywhere out of your local system because it's quite a hack. But it does the work done. And uh, you will have, as I showed previously, uh, the Kubernetes cluster that is there for you. It's here, it's three node, but you, you can define more nodes if you want. So we have the Kubernetes cluster right now running in our development setup. What we want to do is to start the rook that will deploy the Ceph on, on that cluster. And this is really easy to do. So the Rook has these examples, a YAML file where uh, all the uh, operator and nodes defined, so and cluster defined. So you uh, actually execute these two commands to create commands that one is creating operator with some of the uh, security and access rights, and another command creates actually cluster. This cluster YAM YAML file create the the Ceph cluster. Toolbox, this is the special uh, container that helps you to uh, troubleshoot or uh, access the Ceph. And uh, yeah, and in the end you will have the Ceph cluster on these three nodes that was done by the operator. I will try to show you that in the live. So <clears throat> here I already run the Vagrant app on my setup. 
So that brings up the virtual machines, as you can see, attach some disks to it, and start to run the provisioner, so uh, provision those machines here. So that's Kubernetes on admin node. And, um, and after that, you are logged into your machine, and you can see that, yeah, uh, there is the three nodes cluster, Kubernetes cluster is ready for you. So what we are going to do next is to execute those procedures that I talked about. So first of all, we will create the operator. And here it is. It did create. Let's check that out. So we can see that uh, there were some CRD created. And the important one is self cluster, that's clusters, that is actually operator. And right now we can. Uh, we can actually see that there are some pods started in the Rooksef namespace. So you, right now it's just Rook operator, and later there will be also the toolbox created here as well. And we can go ahead and create the cluster now. Okay, and now we can watch how the operator will create the, the cluster. It will take some moment, and so I switch to the presentation. So you, you already can, can see the, how it starts to create the uh, Ceph agents, Ceph, uh, yeah, this is the service container to detect the version of Ceph. And then you will get uh, this self OK. So as I said, uh, this is could be configured to anything. This is by default the tiny cluster, uh, and uh, it also used these uh, boxes from the not boxes the containers from uh, file system self uh, development project. They build there, and uh, you can find them and also use them as well. Uh, we have our own fork that is adapted to the Kubik as well as Casp. So uh, this is located here in GitHub to the Rook. Most of our development is done upstream, and we have this only for maintaining comp compatibility with uh, OpenSUSE and SUSE. And we have the SUSE master branch sp specifically for that. Yeah, so it's great, and let's give it some time. And uh, that gives you uh, the Ceph cluster the, uh, that is operated by Rook. And you can yeah, develop it, you can test it, you can do anything you want in your local setup that provides the ability to uh, do your development locally. Any questions so far about the Vagrant, Ceph, Rook, anything? Looks like not. So when you got your development cluster ready, it's still creating. I think it's just right now downloading the images, <laughs> and probably that takes some time. So I want to show you how you can adjust the Vagrant Ceph, Vagrant Ceph, the parameters. First of all, you have traditional Vagrant file, and here you can find all the needed uh, parameters, like what kind of box. By default, it will take it from environment, or it will default to the OpenSUSE. Also, the configuration of the cluster is here is tiny right now. Other configurations, you can find the con 
config YAML file at the end of the file. Yeah, and there is this different types of configuration with different nodes, how much memory it, is, it requires, how many disks, do, do they need SSDs or just the spinning disks. And you can adjust that in the background file and box you can provide in the parameters. It also provides you the script to set up the vagrant, vagrant locally as well if you want. Okay. After you have your development stop and developers are enabled to do their work, uh, what you actually need is to check their work uh, in CI. And uh, uh, here I will show you how you can possibly build your CI cluster in OpenStack to run against those containers and to verify they are working fine. So uh, you might do that with Vagrant as well if you want. But uh, we have the OpenStack cloud uh, in our environment, so we can use that. For OpenStack, uh, you can use different tools to spin off the cluster there, like Terraform, Scripts, whatever. Um, but Vagrant as well, you can do that. What I did uh, find useful is the heat templates. Uh, because you do not have any other tool in the middle. You just define the heat template and OpenStack Cloud, understand it, and do it thing. It's just the, uh, the job of the OpenStack Cloud to do it, and uh, you will not have any other problems with the tool in the middle. Because when you have a tool in the middle, in my horrible opinion, then when analyzing the log, you try to figure out who is fault in this uh, issue and uh, yeah, it's really hard to analyze many logs with different tools and figure out uh, where is the problem. So I like heat templates. And here I will uh, show you how to uh, spin the cluster in, op in OpenStack with heat template and run some CI on it. So the Kubernetes approach for Kubic is actually the same. And really, I was impressed how easy it is to set up the Kubernetes on Kubic. Uh, yeah, it's a couple of steps, couple of commands, and you have your cluster. So let's. So for heat templates, you need some uh, files to define your cluster. In the uh, vagrant, uh, that's kind of YAML definition plus special scripts that are uh, checking what kind of node you need and spinning this out with libvirt. With hit to play, this is special format. You can find it in this repository as example. So first of all, yeah, this is definition of parameters and etc. And uh, it's yours also can define different networks here. What kind of networks does it need routing? Does it need uh, floating IP and etc. Security groups and uh, actually. Here you spin the servers, one or couple of them if you want. That's done with the help of the server resource group. So this is actually a definition of number of workers that will be spinned in the open stack, what kind of flavor they will use, what kind of image, what kind of network, and etc. So this template actually defines your cluster, and that's why I like it. You define it in one. Uh, small file and uh, upload it to OpenStack and it creates everything for you. Uh, it, I use a couple of environments like uh, what kind of lever for each node because for example in case of the uh, cubic or uh, right now micro OS you can use smaller images for the workers and OSDs that do not require the uh, kube admin and larger worker, uh, larger image on the master node, for example. So, so you take in this template and upload it to the OpenStack. There is one command. You take uh, as the output here is the IP of the master machine, and 
then you run this three standard command which uh, Richard was also defined and we had seen in the uh, vagrant uh, example kube admin init in the master node and uh, then just kube join on the uh, all other nodes and then you deploy the rook in the same way you can use some your own uh, script if you want or you can use i don't know other tools like salt or whatever so you run these commands of deploying the exactly the same commands of deploying the rook and in the end you will have the same health okay cluster here i use different command it's like uh, get self cluster and that's uh, actually could be used to automate your uh, ci it's like checking out if the operator was created created and operator created the cluster and what is the health of the cluster right now yeah and if you need to gather the useful information like logs in case of failure you can use those commands to uh, get all the logs from all the operators there or all the logs from the other different containers as well in the end you just delete the cluster with one command and that's pretty much it uh, so we discussed the vagrant setup on development how you can set up in the ci we have the setup uh, working really well other tools that you can use uh, for rook are the for example terraform kubic kvm you can as i said uh, spin off the cluster in openstack as well as using the libvirt uh, in locally so it's up to you it's up to your taste if you want to start with scratch nobody prevents you uh, if you do not like the vagrant vagrant for example self or something like that the upstream also have the examples of minikube and their own chorus kubernetes uh, vagrant setup so yeah there are plenty of options if you want to use them go ahead uh, unfortunately it doesn't work that smoothly uh, there are some bugs in the images uh, currently in OpenSUSE. Uh, OpenSUSE is aware about it and uh, trying to fix it. So there is a bug that if you spin the multiple nodes, some of the nodes do not start. Right now that prevents me to use the micros images, but, uh, but I, uh, OpenSUSE team provided me, Fabian provided me the workaround and I used those images so far. I'll, after they will, will be fixed, we will use uh, micros for sure. Another bug is with uh, open, uh, OpenStack, I found, that if you will define the number of interfaces, then it will uh, configure route incorrectly. So right now, on all the nodes, there is only one network interface. It doesn't matter for Rook and development, but in future, when the Rook will be able, and Ceph will be able to use different interfaces, uh, that needs to be fixed, and we need to test that as well. And then the end, let's see what our cluster says. So right now you see different nodes are running. Uh, you can see that uh, OSDs are now running, monitors are now running, and we can go ahead and execute, for example, some of the commands. I will copy paste it from the documentation so you see so you see it working fine yep right now it has warn i think that's there six OSDs up all the monitors and quorum and some manager failed to dip uh, some dependencies i think that those containers are still in development mode so uh, that's not a problem but anyway here you have your cluster uh, running operated by rook and running locally how to contribute you can contribute uh, in Ceph. you can contribute in rook also you can contribute as documentation to OpenSUSE, Ceph, as well as to our obs project and that's all questions i don't i don't have time for questions right so uh, if you have any catch me up around 
catch up Stefan and uh, yeah, ask any questions you want. Thank you.